Providence, Rhode Island had a very dry spring. We had a tease of a toad breeding season in the burial ground after the rains of June 1st. But it petered out under the hot sun. Only after the rains of June 15th did the rains come again often enough to keep the pond full for an entire toad breeding cycle. So the fowler's toads and the gray tree frogs got down to the business of creating the next generation. The first few days after breeding commences, the pond is still pretty empty. But soon enough, the first tadpole arrives. And within days, there are thousands of tadpoles swimming around the pond. Eventually, a very special tadpole is born, and she'll take over the narration of this story. Hi, I'm Teddy. I'm a Fowler's Toad tadpole. As tadpoles, Fowler's Toads live in large colonies, almost like tadpole cities. I could be more famous if tadpoles were actually social, but we pay each other absolutely no mind. We are like the most anonymous city dwellers in the history of the planet. This is a typical day, and a large numbers of us in the area were all swimming, resting, eating, swimming, resting, eating, probably pooping, and just moving around and eating and resting and not paying each other any mind whatsoever. Even after the first wave of tadpoles are born, the adults are still hanging around. That's mom and her daytime burrow getting ready to come out and frolic again. So when we're still real tiny, as we try to settle down for the night, I can't sleep. The adults are out raising ruckus. Check out the snails sliding through the neighborhood. One thing about tadpole life is big ones, little ones, we don't discriminate. We all hang together. This happens to be one of our favorite spots for sunning and resting. We can find a little bit of food here, but mostly this place is just protection from the worms in the bottom of the pond. Ooh, they're so creepy. The pond is full of life. You get to see some of the little isopods. They're kind of real annoying. They're kind of claws and everything. But mostly we just have the day hiding among the vegetation, skimming off all the algae we can get. Here you see my signature move, the tadpole shake as I go up and down leaves getting food. We go anywhere for food. Here we're all scraping algae off the rocks. One result of the extended breeding season is that after a couple of weeks, there are tadpoles of every size in the pond. And I really like that the little guys are just as likely to chase off the big guys as the big guys to chase off the little ones. We really like the shallow water right at the edge of the pond. Sometimes I wonder why something doesn't just come off and eat us. But you know, we're toads and we taste bad. Among the most amazing adventures in the course of the summer is the giant who comes and catches us. He gets this net, scoops us, and puts us in a little container with pond water. Then he sticks us next to this big giant eye. It's, eyes like that are really scary. But then he just lets us go. This guy is from the last crop of babies. From here on in, it's just grow and grow and grow some legs. One day after it rained, the water came up really high and went out over the grass that normally is on the dry side of the pond. And we all just loved that place. We just swam and swam and swam and it seemed like a parade. 
had another encounter with the giant. Days later, I'm about three quarters size. A few days later, I woke up feeling a little off. I didn't know what it was, but I was feeling different. And um, I can't see him, but eventually I figured out I'm starting to grow legs. This is the best picture you're ever going to see of a tadpole eating. You see those white things around my lips? Those are scrapers. They're made of keratin, the same stuff as your fingernails. We use them to scrape algae and bacteria off the leaves, and then we use our tongues to lick it off the, the scrapers and into our body. The tadpoles growing fast is important, so the more we eat, the faster we grow. A few days later, you can see me doing the shake, and the legs are bigger. You can see them better. They kind of stick out like little bumps at the side of my tail. A few days later, I almost feel like they're big enough to help me get around. About this time in most of the pond, the pickerel weed's so thick that you can hardly swim around. Here's a picture of the isopods we share the pond with, but what I really like is those little white worms that swim by. Most of the pond is really murky, but there's this one little corner that has very nice clear water, so I go there when I need to clean my eyes out. And you know, I have very nice eyes. A drive-by by a big snail See that little orange dot? That's one of the baby snails. Through the summer, the spiders get more numerous, but I try to stay far away from those guys. They're dangerous. Not only do I have legs these days, I'm starting to develop the coloration, the gray and black spotted appearance of an adult. I am styling. Any of the first guys now have four legs. They'll be leaving the pond in three or four days. But you can see there's lots of us still behind them. Three days later, after the first of us were hopping out of the pond, we got a visit from the bullfrogs. They're dangerous. They'll eat everything. Good thing some of us have already gotten out of the pond. Our little pond ended up with about six or seven of them, but we seem to have managed to come through relatively okay. I guess they weren't that hungry this year. Popping out front legs right at the end takes so much energy and food that all of a sudden you get real skinny. I do worry about the little ones with the bullfrogs still around. Late in the season, caught sight of a great tree frog tadpole, that red flag waving in the middle. For some reason, we only see a few of these every year. Like pigs at the trough, scraping that algae. The two in the center have achieved true toadlet coloration. Clear water, Lots to eat, plenty of sunshine, this is the life. We follow this road up the hill that leads to the rest of the big wide world. I wish I could show you the blue body and the graceful swimming instead of just the tail of the tree frog. When the tail starts to shrink, it shrinks fast. So you rarely see anybody with just the stump of a tail. With the pond going dry in late August, that ripple was the last sign I saw of a bullfrog in the pond. Up close and personal with the giant. Here I'm building muscle so 
I can tackle the hill when I'm ready to go visit the big wide world. Drive for about 10 days now. Pond's getting real low. By the end of August, the deepest part of the pond looked like this. The best thing about a dry pond at the end of August is that it means all the bullfrogs leave. And so next spring when we get back together, we'll be much safer. Yeah, 2015 turned out to be a pretty good year for Fowler's toads in the North Burial Ground. Thousands and thousands of us turned into little toadlets and headed out to the big wide world. Roll the credits and I'll see you in the spring. <laughs>